Hi, there has been a lot of uh, talk about uh, Wi-Fi 6 specifically and 5G cellular, uh, whether there is going 5G is going to kind of uh, kill Wi-Fi 6, etc. So I kind of uh, want to dwell on this uh, briefly. So I call it as uh, something where cooperation and competition is involved. Um, my name is uh, Srikant and I am with NanoCell Networks. So let me start with looking at the Wi-Fi evolution. As many of you already know, we are uh, and very nicely positioned by Wi-Fi Alliance. We are in the sixth generation of Wi-Fi with 11AX hitting the market and uh, ever increasing uh, peak speeds. Um, of course, 2.4 and 5, 6 gigahertz on the anvil, uh, new technologies, uh, OFTMA coming in as well, MIMO, multi-user MIMO, etc. Large bandwidths, uh, similar to a carrier aggregation concept in cellular, etc. Backward compatibility, of course, being very important and extremely successful. Right? And I'll briefly talk about that. Let's look at the cellular evolution. Cellular evolution has also undergone a, a rapid progress the last 30 years or so. And we are at the cusp of a lot of 5G deployments, which is where the talk once again of whether 5G will uh, kind of uh, obliterate Wi-Fi and so on. Um, so remember that uh, cellular systems generally are a little bit bigger because they involve what we call as the radio access network and the core network, which is all towards packet core now. And uh, a lot of investment, a lot of news, license spectrum, etc. Now, one small difference in the evolution of cellular, uh, as we see here, and what we saw in the previous slide in Wi-Fi, is that Wi-Fi generations more or less have to kind of survive in the same unlicensed band, the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Generally, cellular evolutions hop bands in the sense that in the same place at the same time, you don't find 2G and 3G deployed or 3G and 4G deployed. Changes are happening with 4G and 5G where we can have uh, because of the technology similarity between the 5G uh, NR as it's called and LTE, uh, coexistence uh, similar to a Wi-Fi concept is possible. Okay, So that is a sort of a, a new thing to keep in mind, uh, ever increasing peak speeds um, and of course generally a lot of attention and so on. So just keep this backdrop as we go and look at the real issue. So is it really competition or cooperation? Why do I even mention competition? The only reason for mentioning competition I feel is that I think they thrive off each other, uh, not so much of a dedicated thing. But to look at that, let's look at a few facets. As I have mentioned, cellular operates predominantly in license spectrum, lots of money, lots of news. Uh, Wi-Fi, of course, has only been an unlicensed and not going to any licensed band as far as I know. Cellular, of course, as you will see later on, also has some uh, things happening in the unlicensed band. It has moved from voice to data, CS to PS. Um, uh, Wi-Fi has always remained PS, also can carry voice with Wi-Fi calling now becoming big in many countries. So Wi-Fi not only carries data, but also voice. But the real most important trend which I tried to capture in the picture is we really have just one device which makes a big impact on the cellular network. And not only the same device, but so many other things. For a lack of space, I cannot accommodate everything. I think plenty of devices. Why is that the case? Many of our large volume data use cases, nowadays TV and laptops and so many other things, <clears throat> are predominantly indoors. Many times, uh, you know, people watching it are seated typically. And so this makes for a very friendly use case for Wi-Fi. Indoors, uh, lots of data, more or less static environment. Uh, and let's not forget the low cost of embedding Wi-Fi. Uh, no need to go to a carrier. Uh, really no need for wide area mobility, which is very much needed in a smartphone when you go out, you would like to uh, keep track of things on all fronts, voice, data, maps, etc, etc. So I think that tells a very significant story that you can't wish away Wi-Fi. Sure, because it's presence in a large number of devices and I like to call Wi-Fi as the king of indoors, uh, whereas especially with all these devices, 
uh, whereas cellular of course satisfies a very important need outdoors with mobility on the move and even providing services for these devices on the move when you are in a car and so on okay so really uh, i think it's not one versus the other i think in many places we see a lot of cooperation um, could be in a car could be in a train where we use cellular as a backhaul and use Wi-Fi inside and that is becoming more formal with 5G okay now on the IoT side cellular has tried a lot but we have really not gotten on to a sort of a, a case where we have had tremendous success indoor IoT whether Wi-Fi is apt or not we find a lot of things happening on IoT so in a certain sense the good points for Wi-Fi are great indoors unlicensed band lots of devices voice data IoT everything going for it okay now what are some approaches where Wi-Fi people feel a little threatened I think it's primarily coming from this approach from cellular where they're trying to get into some unlicensed band okay now this unlicensed band effort of cellular has not really become a threat with this uh, LAA approach. Um, Multifire takes it one further and 5G brings it into the sort of 3GPP mainstream case. But I think it's not going to be positioned in the same way as Wi-Fi. It's possible that this unlicensed effort of 3GPP might be more positioned towards niche kind of use cases primarily because of the price, performance and other considerations. Okay. I think the real story to look at from a cooperation form from uh, front is even service providers offloading on Wi-Fi and in the future with 5G uh, coming up and saying that we'll do cellular plus Wi-Fi, I think we have a lot going for something together. I think that's the story that I want to leave you with, that even service providers I think will use a lot of Wi-Fi either in offload or cellular plus Wi-Fi. And I don't think this 5G unlicensed is as such something that Wi-Fi should view as straight competition. I think one should view it as more of something which spurs Wi-Fi to look at itself much more critically and possibly develop a lot of new techniques for enhancing its core uh, use base. So I'll leave you with this story that just the picture tells that Wi-Fi has lots of devices, cost and many other issues come into play here. Uh, Wi-Fi is continuously evolving and I think the competition uh, spirit helps both to kind of spur themselves on but I think the cooperation spirit uh, which you will see even in some of the fixed wireless offerings by many of the carriers will really be the I think the story which we can kind of take to the market and sort of grow with both technologies okay so I, have, I hope I've added some perspectives um, our website is nanocellnetworks.com. I hope you will find something interesting there. Thank you.